Today we're going to learn how to use gizmos in Blender Geometry Nodes. So, let's see. Okay, first of all, what is a gizmo? A gizmo, when we are in object mode and we select an object, like the default queue, if we go to this panel or press T and click here, these arrows of colors are called gizmos. So basically, it's just controls to apply a transform. In this example, to move the object. Also, we have this type of gizmos called diode. To apply, for example, a rotation based in a cycle. Also, we have these ones with a little box to apply scales in different axes, and this one where we can see all of them together. So, all these controls are called gizmos, and usually when we are in object mode, they are just to apply transform. However, we can add gizmos to apply any change in geometry nodes, so to control any value. So, let's see how we can do that. Let's go to Geometry Nodes and create a new profile. I'm going to close this, today we don't need it. And I'm going to disconnect this and not delete it because we're going to use it. And let's add a cube node because I want to control the three axes of size. This one, this one, and this one with gizmos. So to use a gizmo, what we can do is to write gizmo. And we have three types of gizmos. We have linear, dial and transform. Let's start with linear. When we add this here, it's going to appear this arrow. This arrow doesn't change the size. You can zoom the camera and always have the same size. However, what we can do first of all is to change the color. Primary is the color yellow. We have this one and then we have the three basic colors. Red, green and blue. And here we have the design. So now we have an arrow. We can select cross, as you can see, and box, similar to arrow, but with a box. I'm going to leave it in arrow. Now, what I want is to control these three axes with gizmos, because right now I can click here, but nothing happens. So what I have to do is to isolate these values with combine. I. And now what I'm going to do is to connect the three axes in the group input to connect it later in the gizmo. So let's connect it here, here, and here. Now maybe you're wondering, where are the controls to see the cube, to control the size? When we connect something in the group input, remember, the controls are in the modifier of geometry nodes here, as you can see. Okay. Now, how we can connect this? As you can see here, it says value. So basically, the only thing we have to do is to connect the value that we want to control here. So let's start with the X. I'm going to connect it here. And now you see this special wire with two wires. This is a bit confusing, but basically, this now is the main control. So basically, it goes in this direction. And then, it goes to here. That's why we have two wires. And if you notice here, we have this icon. This icon is just to tell you that this value can be controlled with a gizmo, like this one. OK. And now, if I try to move this arrow, you can see that basically is applying a change in the x axis, in the right one. So it's working. We can increase or decrease if we move it in the other direction. And always, when we release it, it comes back to the same position. If you want also, what you can do is to have the normal controls here. OK, now what is this of position and direction? Position is just the position of the arrow. As you can see, we can move the position of this arrow. And direction is the direction of the arrow, we can decide in which direction we want to apply this arrow. So first of all, it's being connected in X. So what I want is that this gizmo, this arrow, is pointing to this direction, like the X axis. So first of all, let's start changing the color. Red. And to make it positive in X, we have to select 1 in X and 0 in the other axis. 
Okay, now it's perfectly aligned, as you can see. And the only thing we have to change is that the position has to be always in the end of the limit of the x axis. So basically, here. So, how we do that? To do this, we can move this. But what we have to do, first of all, is to isolate these three axes, like before. So let's make a copy of this, connect it here. And now we need to connect this here because we are working with x, remember, x, x, x. And now the arrow is there. So it's not in the middle and it's here. But what's happening? Why is not here? Let me select 4. So to understand what's happening, basically, I'm going to hide this because we don't need it. So right now, the cube has 4 of a scale. This is 4. And it's taking this value, remember, 4, and it's applying the position of the arrow. So this position in 4 meters. So from here to here. However, we want this here. So what we have to do is to divide always this input by 2, right? So this value, whatever value we have in x, divide it by 2 to move this here. So to do this is really easy. The only thing we have to do is to divide this with math by 2. You can divide it by 2, and now, as you can see, it's working perfectly, or you can multiply by 0 0.5. It's the same. And now, whenever we release the arrow, it will be in the right position. However, when we move the arrow, as you can see, it's not in the right position. Why? Because the value that is taken to move this is directly from here. If you want to fix this problem, then disconnect this and update it from here. And now, always the arrow will be attached to the right location, as you can see. So this is how we add a gizmo to control any value. Now what we can do is to apply two more gizmos to control these values, this one and this one. To make it faster, what we can do is to make a copy of this, another copy of this. Here, we are going to select the color Y and connect this here, Y, and this in Z, and select the color Z. And now what we have to do, if you want what you can do to not have too many wires, is to make a copy of this, disconnect this, and connect this here, this here, and this here. Don't worry, this is the same. So this is like a copy of this, don't worry. And now, as you can see, for each axis, we have a gizmo. However, the only thing we have to change, the position is OK, but is the direction. So the green one, this one, we have to do it positive in Y. So 0, 1, and 0. And this one has to be 0, 0, positive 1 in Z. And as you can see, with this simple setup, I just create three gizmos to control the size of this cube with these arrows. And now we can do is to convert this object to volume with mesh to volume, as you can see. And we can convert this volume in points. Points in volume. So if we increase the size of the box, we are going to add more points. Now let's learn how to use another type of gizmos like dial. So, ah, by the way, another thing I forgot to say is that if you click out, the gizmos disappear. If you want the gizmos to be always visible, then you need to click here. When you click here, for example, now in X, if I click out, this gizmo will be always visible.
So if you want all the gizmos visible, then activate these buttons. Now coming back here, what we can do, this value controls the density, the number of particles in this object. So maybe instead of doing from here, what I can do is to use another gizmo like a cycle. So let's use the second gizmo called gizmo dial. And basically, is this type of gizmos as we saw before at the start. So what we can do is to control. Let's make a copy of this. And let's connect density here and connect it here to control the density with a dial gizmo. We can make it visible if you want all the time or not. And the position, I'm going to leave it like that because I like it in the middle. But if you want, you can change it. And this is the rotation. I like it like that. So now with this dial, this gizmo, I can control the number of points, the density. So as you can see, you can control any value in any geometry node with any gizmo that you want, a narrow or a dial. And here, if you want, you have the radius to make it bigger or smaller. Here, as you can see, I just add some rectangles to see with the color which gizmo is which one. The red, the green, the blue, and the yellow. Now, I want to tell you something important. If you apply a transform here and you try to move with translation your object, you will notice that the gizmos stay in this place. To avoid this and to make all the gizmos that you have to follow the object with the transform, what you have to do is to join all the gizmos with transform. So basically what you have to do is to use a join geometry. And the important thing is to add it before the transform. It doesn't matter if it's here or here, it doesn't matter. The important thing is before this. And now just connect this here and you will see that this one that is being joined here, if I try to move this, it will follow the object. And if I want to do the same with the others, then I need to add it here or you can make a copy and add it in a process before. This one, this one, and this one. And now if we try to move the translation, you will see that all the gizmos follow the transformations and also the rotations. However, if you use a set position, it's different because it's not a transform. So now I have a set position, and if I try to move offset, you will see that doesn't work. So to do this, it's a bit more work. What you have to do, let's say that we have this vector as input, and we add it here. So you will need a copy of the input that you add here in the other positions of the gizmo. So for example, let's do it like that. And now if I move this, with set position, offset, or whatever I add in the middle of this process, it will be applied to this gizmo. If you want to do the same with the others, as we have already one input, we need to use a vector math. So what I will do is to use vector math, add it in the middle of this, and now add this input. And now the red one, as you can see, is following the input of offset. So basically you have to repeat this if you want to use set position with gizmos. Something like that. And now like this, it's ugly. I'm just trying to show you how it works with set position. So right now, as you can see, any input that I add in set position, all the gizmos will follow the object. And the last gizmo that we have, it's called gizmo transform. This one. This one is the gizmo that have all the gizmos, like before when we click here in transform. That's why it's called transform gizmo. 
However, this one is a bit more complicated because it's using the matrix socket, this type of socket that have this color. I'm not expert using this type of sockets, but I'm going to explain you how it works here. So to use this, because now it doesn't work, as you can see, we need to use transform. Remember, transform, transform. And to use this type of socket, we need to select here matrix. So matrix basically it combines the basic transforms, translation, rotation, scale, in this special socket that have the three basic transforms in this socket. Now as you can see, it's the same socket, and to use this, we need to use combine. Combine transform. That is basically the socket. As you can see here, it combines translation, rotation, and scale in transform and in this socket. So we can connect this here and this here. Remember, if you want to see the gizmos all the time, we need to click here. Okay, now, as you can see, it's working, but the position is not being updated because we need to update this value, like the previous gizmos that we use. So to do this, we need to connect this here, like before. Just imagine that this is combined X, Y, and Z. So like before, we need to connect this here, this here, and this here. And now we need to update the position with translation. And as you can see now, it's been updated in real time. And rotation, if you want to update it, connect it here. Too. However, as you can see, sometimes it's not aligned. The arrows, like a scale. So to solve this problem, to make the arrows, the directions, the axis, to have the perfect align, we need to select here instead of global to show local. And when we click here, as you can see right now, the arrows and the, the ones to scale the object are perfectly aligned, as you can see. If we leave it in global, then it's a bit confusing. So now works better. Honestly, I don't find this too useful because I almost never use this type of gizmos, but at least you know how to use it with this simple setup. And if you want to hide some of these gizmos, what you have to do is to press N and you need to click here and go, sorry, in note. And this is to show or to hide this type of gizmos. For example, if you want to hide the rotation, then I'm going to disable all this. And now we only have the position and the scale. If you want to show only, for example, the scale, you can leave it like that. Or maybe you want only translation and rotation. So with these properties, you can show or hide this type of gizmos. If this transform gizmo is too confusing for you, I just recommend you to use linear gizmo and dial gizmo. With these two, you can do a lot of things. So if you like this video, please give a like, subscribe, and remember, you can download this project and many more on my pattern. And see you in the next video.